Wang Rulan asks if that particular person still has a girlfriend, to which Sang Ji tells her that she wonders, but the guy seems to be single now. At first, Wang Rulan tries to rest assured that Sang Ji will have to see. Still, then she quickly corrects herself by referring to Sang Ji's friend and instead asks if that friend likes the guy she's mentioning. Sang Ji, in response, tells her that she doesn't know it either. But what she thinks is that her boyfriend just treats her friend as a little sister, and he was already dating when Sang's friend started to like him. However, whenever she thinks about it, she just feels sad. We all know Sang is just trying to cover up, but actually, it is she talking about her own. Anyways, Wang Rulan asks about that friend's age, and Sang Zhu tells her that it's been three years since he graduated. So Wang Rulan asks about how old was her friend when she started liking him, and she tells her that she was around 8th grade. Yu Xin, who was overhearing their conversation, turns to them and says that it is already normal. If he had feelings for Sang Zhe at the time, then he was just a pervert. In addition, Wang Rulan says that this man is like 25 right now, and if he still hasn't had any experience in dating, then a 25-year-old man without that type of experience will be a pervert. Yu Xin, however, says that she's not referring to the man being a pervert, but actually that he could have problems from down there. She was referring to, well, you know the intimate things and whatsoever. Even Sang Zi was at first confused upon hearing about it. But when she soon realizes it, she stops them from saying any nonsense while blushing as her face turns red. Wang Rulan asks Sang Zi to tell her more about this man. But Sang Ji says that he's attractive, he gets good grades, and his personality is... She hesitates at this point. Meanwhile, both the girls try to let her speak, and Sang Ji hesitatingly responds that he is being a tease. Wang Rulan and Yu Xin both have their different compliments about this. Wang Rulan says attractive and knows how to tease, then how can this person not have a girlfriend? But Yu Xin says that even if her brother's friend hasn't dated for 20 years, there's only one possibility left. Upon asking about that condition, Yu Xin says that it's a possibility that he likes her brother, so he's more like a bisexual supporter or something. In addition, she says this is what she thinks that her brother doesn't have a girlfriend either, right? So saying says that he never actually told the family, so she thinks it that way to which Yu Xin clarifies that the mystery this way is already solved. Sang Ji tries to conflict by saying to Yu Xin and suggests she stop reading these novels that are manipulating her mind. But it's not how things go. Later that time when they all sit together and they ask Song Ji about what her brother's friend is doing right now. She mentions that she only thinks that he's a programmer in a gaming company. But what her brother had said was that his projects are all MMORPGs, basically action games. Now here's when these computer coders and programmers were always talking about one thing. When Sang Ji mentioned that he's a programmer, one of her friends asked if he was a programmer and still she was sure that he was attractive. Sang Ji says that she may not have seen a lot of guys, but she has never seen a guy more attractive than him growing up. Her friend concludes that he spent a lot of his time coding and pulling up all night. He probably won't be what she is imagining on her own. Sang Ji, upon all these compliments, concludes that what if he might be having a good skincare routine? But in response to that, Yu Xin simply straight up says that it is pretty much gay. In the meantime, Ning Wei also comes out from the bathroom while she combs her hair, says... According to her opinion, Sang Zi is very pretty and there is no need to keep struggling with the same guy. So if she can't get over with him, both of you aren't married, so she can give it a try on her own. Sang Zi asks if she's the one needing to pursue him, to which Ning Wei says, Yeah, so what's wrong with it? However, Yu Xin mentions that maybe she doesn't have to chase after that guy. Just act out a tiny bit. And what she recently said is that he says he likes to tease people. It's her turn to tease him back now. Sang Ji, for a moment, thinks about how she would approach him, and once she gets a chance, she will be flirtious with him and ask him why he is blushing whenever he sees Sang Ji. However, this seems scary to her, so she just opposes it. That's no way. 
Moreover, she walks up to her bed and tells her friends to just pretend that she is drunk and discuss a romantic story with them. More like she is pushing them away now. After some time, they all go to their bed when the lights are off, and we see Sang Ji is unable to sleep, lost in her thoughts all of a sudden. She ponders about Duan Jia Xu, who has been Si Glue this whole time, from the time he left the city and came to Yi He. He went to work alone, he lived alone, he ate alone. She concludes that Duan Jia Xu was also alone in Nan Wu when he was studying there. He even went to part time jobs, yet he was alone there too. She flashbacks her memory when once she went to his shop and asked him herself if he was working here alone. He tells her yes, he is alone, and hands her the thing she came here to purchase from him. On that day, Duan Jiaxu mentioned to Sang Ji that he thought she was cute, so whatever he packed for her, he told her that he had added more than was demanded. The next morning, just when Sang Ji gets up, she takes out her phone and is seen she is texting someone. Her phone dialogue box is shown where she had received a text message from Duan Jia Xu. He tells her that the next time she ever goes out and is late for return, she should at least accompany someone with her. That was in the middle of the night, and now that it is 6 a.m., Sang Ji responds to him. Duan Jia Xu sees that she has replied to him, but the time is too early in the morning, so he asks if she is awake so early. Is it because she is not feeling unwell due to alcohol? She says no, so Duan Jia Xu lets her know to try not to drink it the next time she goes out. After this, she tries to share her compliments to Duan Jia Xu for what she might have intended, you know. She types a long message, but keeps on editing it on and on so it sounds more clear and verbally good. Her thoughts are also messing up what Duan Jia Xu would think if she wrote it this way, so she edits it again. Anyways, on the other side, Duan Jia Xu is seen getting ready for work too, so he receives this message from Sang Ji. Brother Jia Xu, thank you for bringing me back yesterday. When you are free, I will treat you to lunch. It is fine if you are not free soon. We can wait until it's Thanksgiving. I will take the day to thank you for all that you have done for me. Uh, Duan Jia Xu on reading this seems confused about the word you. And by the terms of this context, Sang Ji has edited the sentence and used a more respectful term you to call Duan Jia Xu. This is questioned, but it simply seems that there could be many other ways to express that in English translations. In response, Duan Jia Xu records a voice message and passes it on to Sang Ji. She taps it open, and Duan Jia Xu's voice is heard. Duan Jia Xu mentions to her that he probably won't need to work overtime, so he will let her in advance first. And when the time comes, he refers to himself as brother as usual, and tells Sang Ji that his brother will come and bring her to fix her phone. Sang Ji tells him that her phone is completely fine. What does he mean? Duan Jia Xu tells her that if it is so, he presumed it was broken when she typed out the word you. He asks why she didn't ever talk with him respectfully. Regarding this, however, this context is quite familiar to some people only because the term you in Chinese means two things, and what Sang Ji had referred to is regardless of the casual one. In addition, Duan Jia Xu mentions that she never respects him because he is the beloved brother in her heart. Sang Ji on this gets a bit blushy and says that Duan Jia Xu never gets tired of such words and treats her as a kid still. She puts herself under the blanket and types him the rest of the messages. Why do you seem to be alone for now? But while talking with Duan Jia Xu, she tells him that it is what her dad had told her that the term she used for Duan Jia Xu recently is for the people whose age is catching up to them. I believe now this is the next day, and we see Song Ji getting prepared to go out. As planned, she wants to treat Duan Jia Xu to lunch. Oh right, it is the day, the Thanksgiving. Sang Ji looks good, but while she is getting ready, she ponders about Duan Jia Xu who would complain that she only came here to meet him and got this good looking and pretty for it. Ha ha, dream on. She washes her face until she hears her phone ringing Duan Jia Xu's call. After picking up the call, 
she hears Duan Jiashu with a very pale voice, telling her that he is working overtime so he won't be able to come to her. In addition, he tells her to get something for herself to eat and not to get hungry. He sounds more like horse, which brings attention to Song Ji. So she asks him if he is not feeling well. Duan Jiashu, in response, says that it is nothing, just something like a stomach ache due to something he ate yesterday that wasn't good. Sang Zhu hears him and ponders that he could say it's fine, but how it is when you can simply hear him and judge it by that much that he is not good from his voice. She asks him if he is feeling sick, is that it, to which he tells her not to worry as he will take his medicine and will be good shortly. Sang Zhu on her way downstairs, spam Duan Jia Shu with questions asking him if he was planning to go to the hospital. She says that she will come to his company right away and bring him to the hospital. Should we call an ambulance? Like, bro, come on! Duan Jiashu laughs in return and tells her that at least it is not that serious. She comes out and stops a taxi with her hand, while she is still with Duan Jiashu and tells him that he needs to go to the hospital right now if he is not good. Who says he can recover just by enduring it? Duan Jiashu asks in return. Why is she showing him her attitude all of a sudden? He tells her not to get angry as her brother will obediently wait for her here in the office. Sang Ji gets the taxi and sits inside while she asks Duan Jia Shu about who is he being taken care of. And playfully, when she gets the response that she is showing attitude, she mentions in terms of asking him, who is taking care of who? Later when she arrives in the office, she looks around for Duan Jia Shu somewhere until she looks at him sitting on a sofa placed in the middle, and he is completely hopeless. Sitting there looking up to the roof, he sees Sang Ji in front of him to which he raises his hand and asks her to pull him up. Sang Ji holds his hand with both of hers and sees that he has been heating up ever since, must be in fever she presumes. So she asks him if he is having a fever brother Duan Jia Shi. He says that maybe it is a little bit of fever. Sang Ji helps him lift and holds him by pulling him up her shoulders. She tells him that now she will take him to the hospital. But just then, Duan Jia Shu turns to her. And what it looks like is that he just kisses Sang Ji on her forehead, which makes Sang Ji stunned. Just then, brother retreats on realizing that he might be doing something unlawful. Hey, ponder is just now he did something he shouldn't have. So well, he returns. He apologizes. She looks at him. Info feels his business, to which he asks if he is uncomfortable everywhere. So she ponders that he just bumped into her when she pulled him earlier. And her brother asks her what she means by bombed as she merely gave her brother a chance to touch porcelain. Singh instead tells him to bear with it for a little longer, as she will call the taxi over and take him to the hospital right away. Sometime later, when the taxi arrives, she puts Duan Jia Shu inside and sits beside him. Duan Jia Shu asks her to fasten her seatbelt Sang Ji, but in fact, Sang Ji just gets up and fastens his seatbelt instead. On seeing this, Duan Jiashu says to her that he asked her to fasten her seatbelt to which Sang Ji says that she is here and she will take care of him so sits properly. Duan Jiashu feels relieved with Sang Ji from this, but he ponders about what he did inside, accidentally, which could have embarrassed Sang Ji a lot. Sang Ji on looking at him says to him to rest and better that he sleeps that may bring him to rest, and once they will arrive at the hospital, she will get him up. Duan Jia Shu, because he was thinking about the recent thing, apologizes to Song Ji in return as he says to her, sorry for troubling you. Whereas inside, she thanks her for taking care of him. Later on, it is almost night by so far, when they arrive at the hospital and the doctors inspect Duan Jia Shu, they soon let Sang Ji know about Duan Jia Shu going through acute appendicitis. However, if only Duan Jia Shu had been a bit late in coming to the hospital, it would have been ruptured. Duan Jia Shu is then asked to schedule his surgery as soon as it is possible. More like an immediate response is required. Duan Jia Shu now comes out after his appointment in a wheelchair. He asks Snag Ji to go home, as it is already getting late for her and she also needs to go to university in the morning. She shakes her head, saying no, without saying anything. 
Duan Jiadu says that it is probably nothing but a small surgery. So why to be so serious? Besides that Duan Jia Shu, who calls himself a brother to Song Ji, says that his brother will be fine after resting for a few days anyway. Sang Ze, in response, says that she will wait for him to finish before going back. Sang Ze herself says to herself that if it only wasn't for today's lunch appointment they had planned, Duan Jia Shu wouldn't have gone to the hospital and just continued enduring his pain. Yet he still said it wasn't serious. Duan Jia Shu says to Sang Ji that it would still take more than an hour. I guess his surgery is to be performed now. And Sang Ji insists on staying here until it is all finished. However, Sang Ji rudely tells Duan Jia Shu to stop talking and get over it already. She says that she will wait for him, so be it. Duan Jia Shu accompanies her and says that if that is so, then he will stop talking. Yes, he is having his surgery now, and while Duan Jia Shu is inside the surgery room, Song Zhe is waiting for him outside and using her phone. She searches on the internet about the precautions to take after appendicitis surgery until she receives a call from her mother. Sang Zhe picks it up to which her mother asks if she is still awake and why not sleeping so late. Sang Ji mentions to her mother that she is currently in the hospital because of her brother Duan Jia Shu, who is ill. Her mother asks if she is mentioning Sang Yan's friend Duan Jia Shi. She realizes this matter gets serious and worried, to which she asks, How is he and what has happened? Sang Ji tells her that he has acute appendicitis while currently he is undergoing this surgery. She cared for Duan Jia Shu, so she came to help him, of course. He tutored her and helped them throughout. So she wanted to treat him a lunch today until she met him, and he got severe. Her mother, in response, says to Sang Ju that if she can take care of him, please. Do so, because he doesn't have much of a family either. Sang Ji, on a serious note, asks, What does she mean by this? Her mother sighs and worryingly says to Sang Ji that Duan Jia Shu once wanted a huge amount of money, nearly 3,000 from Sang Yan during her freshman year. Sang Yan didn't have much at that time, so he asked his father, and as she recalls correctly, Duan Jia Shu needed that money for his mother's treatment. Duan Jia Shu paid back the money very quickly, but what Sang Ji's mother thinks is that Duan Jia Shu's mother had passed away. Sang Shu on hearing this quite surprisingly shatters because it is really sad to hear. However, she asks about Duan Jia Shu's father, and her mother tells her she doesn't seem to think he has his father with him too in this world. Because if he would, why would he let his son go here and there for money to treat his mother? Sang Ji recalls Duan Jia Shu, who kept on telling Sang Ji about his responsibilities and that he was alone. Sang Ji sits there on the floor, eventually breaking apart for Duan Jia Shu. Just how it is, about an hour or two later, Sang Ji goes inside and puts down a glass of water on the table beside Duan Jia Shu's bed. She is told by Duan Jia Shu that she should head back because she has her university in the morning. She says that she knows, but she sounds dull, which could be two reasons for what her mother told her. Or two, that Duan Jia Shu's critical health and she has her university to take care of. Let's see. Duan Jia Shu asks her to let him know about the driver's number plate of the taxi she will go by and the time when she will reach her dormitory. She, in response, asks him about his surgery. Did it hurt? Duan Jia Du smiles and says that the doctors used anesthesia, by which the body is first put into a numb condition, and that makes the patient feel no pain at all. Sang Ji then says that she will go and visit him tomorrow after her university. Duan Jia Shu instead says to her that he doesn't want her to rush it every time. And besides, he says that he has no severe problems and that he wants her to keep taking care of him so she wants to come, then only to come when she doesn't have any classes. She says goodbye and walks out. However, just as she walks outside of his ward, Duan Jia Shu ponders about the office scene and says that Sang Ji's reaction earlier seems like she cares a lot about that. And he kind of took advantage of her in that way, besides what's more by her brother's friend. But as he frustrates the matter, 
He says that now that he is thinking about it, this kid will be turning 20 in a few months. And that means Duan Jiashu won't be able to tease her anymore. Although Duan Jiashu looks into the matter and says that it won't be good if she misunderstands and thinks of him as a brute. By this, he starts feeling guilty all of a sudden until he receives a phone call. He picks it up and surprisingly it is Sang Yan, asking Duan Jiashu, I've heard you broke your appendix. How does it feel like? Duan Jiashu says that it feels good, so why not try it? Teasingly but sarcastically, Sang Yan says that handsome people don't acquire such issues. How come he doesn't know it? He says that she is the one to which Sang Yan mentions that such a small problem and he needed someone to carry him and bring him to the hospital all the way. Couldn't he go there by himself? Make sure to know that they two are the closest friends and Sang Yan here feels nothing bad, just what friends do to each other, it's that. In addition, Sang Yan says to Duan Jiashu if he couldn't just get a better will to live. The moment it hurts, Duan Jiashu should voluntarily go to see it at the hospital so that this wouldn't have been a problem. Duan Jiashu asks him if he called only to tell him this. Sang Yan says that he heard Duan Jiashu is sick, so he called to celebrate. But now that you are good, I'm going to bed. Just then, Duan Jiadu asks Sang Yan to wait as he has something to tell him. He sounds much like he is serious or something. And Sang Yan asks to say to him, what is it? So no matter what happens after this, that will be considered for another story episode. Make sure you hit that like button and do give us your feedback. Subscribe to our channel with that notification bell turned on to have more of our updates. Thanks.